Hello, and welcome to the studio. We're still going, Oiltober. What's our next prompt? Cheese. <laughs> this one threw me for a loop. Um, Oiltober so far, I've been really, really proud of how I've been going and how I've been challenging myself, not only with the repetition, but with the doing lots of paintings on different subjects that aren't my usual style, aren't what I paint when I'm creating meaningful work for myself. Um, so this one, I think I may have took it a little bit too far because I decided to do typography, not a strong suit, and I decided to try and imitate neon lighting in paint. This is something I've seen amazing hyper-realist artists do and I'm all like, I'm sure it's normally on giant scale and immaculately measured, but you know, I'll just give it a go. We'll see what happens. And I didn't like my color choices. I didn't like the font choice and I, I just struggled out a little bit, but this is something all painters face. I think this is something all artists face. Sometimes you just go in head first and Sometimes you hit your head on a rock, but it's not the end of the world. It's it's part of the challenge, really. So this little piece I ended up doing was based off a photo on Unsplash of a neon sign that said, Say cheese! And I went, that's a bit of fun. And yeah, mainly just using phthalo green, cadmium yellow, and a bunch of other yellows to try and make it better. I'm actually quite tempted when this is dry to glaze the whole thing in pink. I think that would look really cool, but I don't know if that's just me trying to keep adding to something I should have abandoned. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Should this be pink? reminds me of a long loop of spaghetti. That's not too weird to say. But, eh, it's a piece. It responded to the prompt. It fulfilled its basic needs. So I guess that's as much as I can ask for. Up to day 14, we're just about at the halfway point of the challenge, which it's come up so fast. I have no sense of time this year whatsoever. And our next prompt is Gothic beauty. Oh, my heart sings, my heart soars. I'm so happy. This is definitely a normal, or rather, I should say, this is a prompt that leans on a lot of my strong suits. I've brought this little study out because I'm going to use another reference image of this model and I'm going to go back to my absolute favorite place, comfort zone. No, I lie, it's not my favorite place, but comfort zones are sometimes completely necessary to return to after you've done something challenging. And for me, that's working white into black. So basically I just cover the surface in a thin layer of lamp black paint and then I just work back into it with titanium white on my brush. It's all about pressure, it's all about playing with the dynamic of the paint, and you can achieve forms very, very quickly, which I enjoy. I'm working on a portrait, and then I also decided to integrate a skull. Yeah, a human skull, one of my favorites. This is skull number three for the oil tober challenge. <laughs> so I think I may have to lay off the skulls after this a little bit, but it was necessary. It got me back in the swing a little bit.
did make a decision halfway through to get rid of the lower jaw. You can see there the starting lines that it was going to be an open jawed skull, but I thought that was going to be a bit too odd seeing the mouth so far away when I'm integrating the human elements and the skull elements together, or rather the face and the skull together. So by eliminating that, I was able to actually integrate the neck of the model and I'm much happier with that choice. This style of painting where you can leave things a bit rough really leaves that door open for experimentation, which I really enjoy. And it just gives you a lot of freedoms to have the fun that you would normally have in a sketchbook with pencil and an eraser. You can have the same freedom and the same exploration techniques just using paint. going straight to picking our next prompt because I wanted to get a little jump on this one and build some time in for it. And the prompt is safety. Yeah. Not much entered my mind when I picked out this one, I'll be honest. I was a little dumbstruck and like, uh-huh. So went off, patted the cat, as you do. And I still had no ideas at all. Oh bound to happen in these challenges but yeah absolutely lost so made a cup of tea I like peppermint tea so this is a peppermint and spearmint blend and I still stared at it and I still had no idea what to do considering recent times with COVID-19 and the lockdowns I just went okay someone wearing a face mask that's that's relevant to the mood at the moment in Melbourne you know it is mandatory mask wearing outside the house, it is mandatory mask wearing around others, and for the most part it seems to have been going okay, but just lately there's a real fatigue in the state and everyone's sick of the lockdown and everyone's, you're seeing the numbers go down because it's working, which is fantastic, but at the same time everyone's like, nah, I'm over it. So people wear their masks under their nose, they wear them around their chin, they wear them off their ear, and oh, it drives me insane. I decided to take a break because I was hating what I was doing. I made a TikTok. I had a lot of things to do today, but you know what I did instead? I took a nap. It was a very good nap. That email, I took a nap. The Zoom call, I took a nap. What about your lunch break? Yes, that was my poor attempt at a TikTok. <laughs> TikTok's a fun medium, don't get me wrong, but I am not talented because I have not put the time in like so many other amazing creators. So I came back the next morning after speaking with my housemate and sort of talking out my problem and my frustrations. She came up with a really, really good idea, which was, uh, wouldn't it be better if everyone just wore plague masks? Hell yeah. So I decided to do a plague doctor mask. But I also had to figure out what to do with the background, so I've ended up playing with the shapes of the blue and adding a lot of white to create sort of this stormy, cloudy effect, which is quite fun. It does take up a bit more of the paper than I would have preferred, but that's all part of it. It's part of how this work progressed and it's part of how you've seen it build from a portrait that I hated to this Doctor's Plague mask, which is all leather and scrunchy and awesome. Okay, so we've had a struggle bus piece, a piece I love, a piece that turned into one that I liked, <laughs> the last piece this week, what's our prompt? Oh boy, that's a lot of words. <laughs> this prompt, this prompter, should I say, actually went through the alphabet and gave me a two word prompt for every letter of the alphabet. 
So I, I chucked them in the bucket in two chunks and I just went, if it comes out, I'll figure it out at the time. So what I decided to do was read through all the prompts and I picked the one out that I just went, yes, that's the one I want to paint. The one that appealed to me in the moment was beautiful beetles. In Australia, we have some fascinating insects. Lots of them are really scary, creepy crawlies, but we've also got some beautiful ones. I don't actually know if this is an Australian Christmas beetle, but it's very similar to ones that we have that have this amazing multi-chrome finish on their shells. Um, of course, I prefer to use copyright-free reference images, so this is another one from Unsplash. And because I didn't have my own reference image, it was I didn't want to just jump on Google and find something random because I don't want to use someone else's work without permission. So this beetle is really cute, and he's got these little white sections on the bottom of his tail. I had a go at doing one of those false shadows because I think that effect is just so cool. Insects are not normally my jam, but now I've done a bee and a beetle, so who knows what's going to happen in the next 15, 16 days. We're halfway officially through the challenge. Look at all these prompts I've done. It's insane. Thank you everyone who has contributed a prompt. This is a quick little flick through of the ones that we've done so far. Again, you can follow me on TikTok now, as well as Instagram, Facebook, or here on YouTube. I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and would like to keep up with the project. I just hit 600 subscribers so thank you so much. I've only been on here just over a year so that's absolutely insane and fantastic to meet so many cool artists and other people here on YouTube and I can't wait to just keep painting. So see you later.